Okay guys, so starting us off we have Kara the Lone Valkyrie. This card's pretty unique actually because uh, it's got a high cost, but its effect allows it to come out for very cheap if you want to. Um, so it's unique in the fact that it can be used in control decks or also aggro decks. Uh, I actually use it in one of my aggro decks that I posted. Um, she comes in to get rid of, you know, big guardians like Juggernaut because she can come out with, uh, you know, 4,500 uh, power and have the brawler ability and clear the way for your little guys to poke in for game. Um, she does have an added ability as well. If you don't control any other units, she can't be targeted by spells or abilities, and that's where she kind of comes in for the control variants. Um, so a very versatile card and definitely deserving of the number 10 spot. So coming in at number 9 is the big daddy of the Shard Mecha archetype. Um, this guy is great in control. So he has a summoning condition, which is pretty easy to get off. He's got some complementary uh, champions, mainly uh, Ergon, who's recently off the ban list. I also think he works pretty well with Aiton and also pretty well with Jamal. But uh, Aragon is going to be his main uh, champion because you can just get all of the pieces to the discard zone pretty quick. Um, something that I've noticed in playing this guy is if he sticks, if you have the fire tower and the wind tower destroyed before this guy comes out, it's very hard for your opponent to clear it. Um, it protects itself from something like uh, delayed poison. You know, you can just discard a card and destroy that augment uh, that's attached to it. Uh, so pretty much your outs are, are things like finishing ray and things of that nature. Uh, just massive board wipes or chronostasis. So if he comes out and he sticks, it's almost game over for your opponent. So I this archetype is fantastic. I'm really glad that they added it in here. Um, and I think it's only going to get better as the game progresses. So coming in at number 8, we have Shade of the Silver King, which is a new uh, rarity, you know, in the game, which is Secret Rare. And he's a Legendary, so you can only play one. Now, the reason I have Shade at 8 is he's a very good card, but the reason he's a very good card is because his summoning conditions are extremely uh, easy to pull off. Um, you can build a deck around him and him alone because he has the Destroyer ability. But the Guardian and Target Attack abilities kind of seem out of place, uh, in all honesty. After playing with it, you really utilize the Destroyer ability the most. But, with that being said, still a great card. It's, I think, one of, going to be one of the top-tier decks. Um, Aragon, uh, you know, Corona, Aragon, Sola. Aragon pretty much goes with anything. So, uh, Shade is pretty much built around that deck. And it's it's going to be a real force, and you know he's one of the reasons why people are main decking Bone Scavengers, uh, you know, to take care of stuff like that. Even though Bone Scavenger is a great card on its own, but yeah, that's why I have Shaded Eight. Uh, it's a great card, but it needs decks built around it, and also it's pretty much just a very easy to summon destroyer. Coming in at number 7, we have Misshaper. Misshaper is another one of the new rarity secret rares. Also a legendary, so you can only play one. Uh, I think when people first looked at Misshaper, they thought he was subpar. After playing with Misshaper, he's very good. Uh, the 2 cost uh, for 2,000 power is pretty nice on its own. Um, his ability is most used in... Uh, tandem with Reprobloom, which is one of the key cards in this set as well. But this thing only gets better, again, as the game progresses. With more sets, this, this card's going to get better and better. One of my favorite things with Misshaper uh, has been with green, like copying an Aiton uh, or uh, an additional Garga or the five-cost Aiton, which came out in this set as well. So that's been fun for me to do with uh, mono green but misshaper as a whole fantastic card there's a lot of really good low cost units if you want to play it early but misshaper is supposed to be used later game 
once you have some bigger monsters on board you can copy maybe a three or four drop uh but anyway i've i've really liked miss shaper and i think he's over overperformed to be honest So coming in at number six is Helena, Conjurer Supreme. First thing to note, her artwork's fantastic. Uh, that poor dead skeleton is, I don't know what she's doing to him, but it doesn't look fun. Uh, probably raising him from the dead. So he's got arrows in his back, but he's ready to die again. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so three cost, 2,000 power, already good value. And then her ability's fantastic, uh, being able to tap each turn to cheat things out by uh, banishing them is pretty great. Uh, she pairs nicely with the Blazewalker archetype, you know, getting additional value. She's a nice complementary piece if you want to play, you know, Rain uh, Luna, but she can also be a key focus point in Aragon uh, Corona or, you know, Aragon Kite, Aragon Sola, anything like that. She's, she's pretty much the engine of those decks. So, uh, Expect to see a lot of her in this upcoming meta. Coming in at number five is Great Behemoth. To me, when I was making this list, it was nuts to me that Great Behemoth was the fifth best card in this set. I think it just kind of speaks to how good this set is. Um, but anyway, Great Behemoth, great for aggro decks. Five costs 3,000 power, but he's going to come out for much less because he reduces his cost for each unit you have in play that cost two or less, and then he gives all of those units plus 1,000. So whenever this card comes out, your opponent needs to clear it or it's going to get real nasty. Being able to make uh, certain tokens, you know, uh, 1,500 or uh, 2,000 is nuts. It pairs nicely with Reprobloom, obviously. Something that came up a lot when I was playing Great Behemoth is whenever your Knight token from the Light Tower comes out, uh, Great Behemoth can make that a 3,000 power Guardian, <laughs> which is nuts to me. But uh, yeah, so obviously great card, great for aggro, and this is another one that I think is just going to continue to get better as the game goes on, and probably is, I think this card's eventually going to be on the watch list. So coming in at number four, we have Reprobloom which is probably going to be a controversial number. I think a lot of people were expecting to see it at one. Uh, I think there are three cards better than this card. But uh, with that being said, this card's very good, obviously. It pairs very nicely with Rain or with Liam and their abilities to be able to target it itself, Rain doing it for free, um, you know, to create those two tokens. And if you don't clear it, it's going to become a problem. But from what I've seen, there's plenty of cards that get rid of this card um so it's not the end of the world but obviously it's a power it's a power card but i don't think the meta is going to be focused around this card specifically i i, I think the meta is just going to be aggro this is going to be a nice complimentary piece to aggro builds but you don't need it to win coming in at number three is Eccentric Visitor. Uh, this is another card where I love the art, um, but three cost, 2,000 power. Again, great value already from your cost to power ratio. And then its arrivability is, you know, if you have two or more destroyed towers, you flip your spirit up. So yeah, this card's great. Right now we only have five spirits, and if we get, I'm pretty sure we're getting new spirits sometime early next year. You know, who knows what they'll do, what their soul burst is. So this guy can really spiral out of control, uh, you know, in the later years of this game. <laughs> but currently, uh, he's used more so in aggro builds. He can be splashed in anything, obviously. I mean, the soul burst abilities of, of the spirits are versatile in, in themselves. Uh, there's no reason to not run at least one of these guys. So, uh, yeah, you're going to see this in almost anything. Uh, he's got a very unique interaction with Rudy, um, which I've seen a couple questions on. Uh, the question is, you know, can you soul burst something while Eccentric Visitor and Rudy are in the same stack so you get two arrives so you can soul burst multiple times? And that can happen. So, 
Uh, that's a very nice interaction. It's kind of a power play similar to what Rudy and Sylvia were back whenever Sylvia wasn't banned. But yeah, this card's going to continue to get better even though it's really good already. So coming in at number two, we have Treat, which I think as the game progresses and we get more sets, this card's probably going to be the best card in this set as time goes on, but right now I think it's number two. Being able to send any card you want to the discard zone for a cost of one and sacrificing a unit is absolutely insane. Also, <laughs> like I said, the more sets we get, there's going to be cards that depend on being in the discard zone, uh, whether it be spells um, or augments, anything like that, and then this card just sends it there for free. So, uh, yeah, later on, really watch out for this card. This card is 100% going to be banned if the game continues to progress. Uh, it's just that good. But for now, uh, its interactions, you know, are mainly with Dark, sending something like Shade of the Silver King to the discard zone or the pieces for the Shard Mecha uh, to the discard zone. Um, there's an endless possibility of cards that you want there. And are viable with treats so definitely fantastic right now and it's only going to get better and coming in at number one in my opinion is bone scavenger it is not bone scavenger which i have mispronounced <laughs> multiple times it's bone scavenger which is a word i've looked it up um, but anyway, one costs 1,000 power. Fantastic already. Being able to expel a target unit when it arrives is also nice. And then being able to pay any amount that you want, depending on you know the availability of it, to expel a target unit from either discard zone and put a plus 500 counter on it that's permanent is absolutely insane. Right now, the game is somewhat uh, discard zone reliant. So this is a direct counter to those cards. This uh, this is something like Repper Bloom. You know, if if you don't clear it, it becomes a problem really fast. Um, you know, it pretty much looks at Aragon and says, you know, no soup for you. You know, nah, -uh, not my house. He just sits there and he stares at Aragon. He's like, fine, go ahead, mill two cards. I don't care. Try and activate Shade. I dare you. Things like that. Uh, but yeah, he's, he's very good uh, just in general, even if you're not going up against Aragon. Every deck right now has some kind of interaction with the discard zone, and this being able to just counter it directly is, is, is great. So yeah, that's my list, guys. I really want to know what your top 10 looks like, so please put that in the comment section below and let me know. Uh, you can always hit me up on discords. Uh, I'm in the Tavern Brawlers Discord. Uh, I'm also in uh, NH Ravens Discord. You know, just shoot me a message. I'm also on Facebook if you want to message me there. And let me know. Okay, guys. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Zeppelin out.